Knife, today I'm going to be doing a sort, so uh, just an introductory video to 3D modeling in Blender. Uh, basically just creating some cool sword concepts and stuff, so uh, I thought I'd leave out reference images for now, they're a bit more complicated than in 2.8 than 2.7, so that's why I've left them out, but uh, first of all tab to go into edit mode when you're on the default cube, just using the default uh, area level thing uh, to start with so uh, to select multiple edges uh, so if you go into front view which is one uh, you can press Z which takes you to wireframe mode uh, then C to enable this select thing and if you drag it across these vertices here you see the ones at the back are also selected you can press E to extrude and then uh, you can do it on this axis that it gives you also if you wanted to do it on the X axis you can also do it across the uh, Y which just moves it Y but we're in perspective so we can't see the Y so it's like that's a Y uh, grab it and then do it down which works fairly well yes the discord's pinging that is uh, my discord so if you wanted to join on and ask some questions about 3D modeling. To do loop cuts, oh sorry, I didn't explain what I just did, alright, so we press S to scale and then we move in and out, and uh, whatever direction you want to do it, so you can do it by values as well, so if you press L and say 1.2, it gives you 20% uh, of the original size scaled up, if you do scale 0.8, it takes away 20% of the size of what it originally was. Uh, so at the minute we have this uh, square shape sort of thing, and it doesn't look that great to be honest. That's why we're going to add a subdivision modifier. So if we come down to the modifier tab over here to the right, there's a little uh, blue wrench sort of structure going on there. A uh, little UI bit. New UI for 2.8, so I'm still kind of getting used to it. Mostly been doing some sculpting stuff, but other than that, it's fairly easy. So we come down to subdivision surface down here. As you can see, it doesn't look great to be honest. Uh, we can up the details so it looks a little bit better, but for now we can just stick with this. Uh, for, so this is the bottom of the sword. We can do a loop cut here by con pressing Control R and then click. Then we can move it down so that it looks a little nicer there. So if that's the basic handle for the sword we can shift C which takes you to the center of the uh, model area uh, and then shift A I keep losing the word for that but it will come to me so shift A and we can add uh, curves, meshes, surface, metaballs but we only need to worry about meshes at the minute so we're going to add in another cube this one we're going to scale up a bit so that it will go outside a good thing to do with this sort of thing is you can do control 1 again so we get a sub surf and we go into the edit mode and we can scale up and we can scale across the x axis to get us a hilt now it looks really crap at the minute not gonna lie so we can fix this we can add some loop cuts and add this many loop cuts we can up the quality of it so it looks a bit nicer. So if we do a quality of two, well, quality is three, but uh, render and viewport of two, we can see that it is actually making the mesh smaller without making our vertices uh, count go higher. So we can do something cool go to the side view we can do another loop cut down the center here which makes it more square then if you wanted to you can do another loop cut here which I'm gonna do makes it more square just looks a bit nicer I'm gonna grab the inside here and scale it by the X which is S and X moving inwards I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter altogether just so that it emphasizes the I did something never mind I did a hide so if you press H by accident like this it'll hide the mesh so if you do alt H it unhides the mesh for you 
bit of extra knowledge there for you. In the side view I'm going to scale it to Y as well, which is S and Y, just to make sure that it looks uh, to the best of it, it can look. Now a cool thing you can do with Blender is, if you go to front view, you can, or you can do it in most programs to be fair, just the same Blender because that's a program we're in. If we go to the front view, we select the outside edges of this hill, we go to the side view, we scale it on the Y axis, this will move this in and also make these pointier. So uh, you can see there's a uh, it's significantly pointier on the edges now and it just looks genuinely nicer so it's a win-win uh, I'm going to go down to the actual handle again and I'm going to sort this out I'm going to maybe extrude this by pressing E then scale 0.8 which scales it down so if we hide this for now uh, you can see that it's scaled down a bit more if you want to get more scale on it, you can add a loop cut, put that here, it just emphasizes the scale changes of it. Uh, remember Alt-H to unhide the other selected objects. Uh, we're going to go add another level of subdivision uh, in the viewport, which gives us this. Uh, we can also go in and add more loop cuts if you want. So loop cuts just allow more detail to be put on. So if we add this amount of loop cuts, uh, we can go into top left, and, uh, underneath help and window, we can select the faces and just Z to go into wireframe mode and select these. I'm going to press E to extrude. Uh, need to select this side as well. Yep, there we go. So we've selected all around. I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to go Alt S and that scales it a bit so we get different handle designs like this. I quite like this. I was going for out so you can go Alt S and then move it outwards as well but it doesn't look as nice as it going in to be fair. So we have a, a hilt almost complete. Normally swords uh, hilts have something on the bottom so we can go to Shift A as I said before. And we're going to get a UV sphere, and the reason we're getting UV sphere is it just looks nice. Swords with the balls on the end genuinely look a little better than the ones that do. So that's already starting to look more like a sword rather than something that a child's thrown together with crayons. Now, if we're in a bomb view, uh, we can add, say, a spike to the bomb, which would be cool. I suppose we can add a spike. Just select all of these faces and E to extrude. I'm going to go out a bit like that, and I'm going to leave the outer edge. So I'm going to deselect that just by pressing. Uh, so while you're selecting stuff in uh, edit mode, so you press C and you, and you're, you say select these meshes. You didn't mean to select these meshes or these uh, faces, sorry. So you press middle mouse button while also hovering over them, which gets rid of the selection. So you can also make this bigger or smaller, so say you wanted to get them bits, get that, and then you wanted to deselect that. Uh, it's quite useful in many occasions. So I'm going to E to extrude this, I'm going to move it down a bit, like that, and I'm going to grab the individual uh, vertices. So I'll just go into edit mode, I'll just go like this. Uh, an alternate way of doing that, you could just go like that and deselect all that with a middle mouse button. I'm not going to press grab, and I'm going to press Z. I'm just going to pull that out until it looks about alright. Yeah, we can go a bit further down to be fair because the scaling is quite. Yeah, that looks good. So at the moment we've got a hilt which is fairly low poly. This, if applied the subsurf modifier, will run in games quite well. Uh, it could do to be a, a tad higher, maybe a tad lower, but it's your preference, it depends on what type of game you're developing it for, what platform you're developing it for. If you're developing it for a game, you could be doing a movie. If you're doing a movie, it would want to be a lot higher. Uh, sorry, I keep opening the Discord. Never mind, just ignore that. <laughs> so, uh, 
Right, so we're going onto the blade now. So with the blade, how I normally do sword blades in Blender is I press shift here, I grab myself a circle, and the circle will be hidden. So you just press Z to go back into wireframe mode. I'm gonna go into edit mode by pressing tab G and oh sorry G and then Z to move it up to the top of the hill. It's about there. I'm gonna press the top view and I'm gonna scale it by the Y, which makes it thinner. Then I'm going to scale it by the X to make it a bit thicker on that edge. Could be a bit thinner, there we go, that should do. And then I'm going to press E and extrude it up. Now after I've extruded it to here, I'm going to press E again, but scale 0.9, which scales it a tad. It's not much, actually it could be scale 0.5. Now that's too much skill point A. Yep, that'll work. And dra uh, grab and move it up a tiny bit and then extrude again while also going up. So we're just going to keep grabbing it and Z to move it up. I think with solid blades, they don't need that many vertices because it's just mostly faces. So you can have it mostly faces. I'm actually going to make this a little bit thicker just because it looked. I think it'll benefit from a thicker blade considering how thick the hilt is. Oh, sorry, I'm scaling it across the X, not the Y. Doesn't need to be much thicker, that should do. That genuinely looks less sharp, but should be fine. Stuff like this you can also take into the sculpting brushes and just make it look sharper, genuinely. But it shouldn't need it, to be fair. We can always add a, some else down here. In fact, I think I'm going to do that, so I'm going to make it thin again. Then I'm going to make it a bit thicker when it comes to the bottom, the connecting the, to the hilt. So I'll finish off this by... Oh yeah, is, remember, go to wire mode, wireframe mode, then press C and then select your vertices. Then I'm going to press E and Z and just go up uh, to a beneficial height, then I'm going to press Alt and M and then, wait, I'm not yet I'm going to press Scale and then X because I'm going to scale it down to about here maybe not, scale it a bit further, then I'm going to press E, Z scale a bit more, then I'm going to press E, move it up Z, that locks it to the Z axis then I'm going to press Alt and M, Alt M, sorry, and then I'm going to press either Enter or just left mouse click, and that gives us one vertice, and it connects everything to that one vertice. So, here's the sword so far. I'm going to move it up a bit because I'm not too keen on the biz. So I'm going to move it up. We've got the biz here, so we're going to grab the biz. Press E and then scale 1.5. That should get us a decent blade size. I'm also going to scale it across the X, or the Y, sorry, as well, just so that it looks a bit thicker toward the blade. And E, Z, I think about there should do. Uh, grab Z again, move it down. It doesn't matter if these overlap too much, uh, just don't make them overlap too much. I mean, that looks okay, but it could look better. So I'm thinking adding a subdivision modifier onto here. So we're going to go control 1, and that already looks much better. Uh, you can further emphasize the blades if you want to, uh, or the, the connector to the blade by just adding a loop cut and moving it downward so that it's more towards the blade. Yeah, that's, uh, that's some basic 3D modeling stuff right there. That's all you really need to know to get started. Uh, another thing that you can do is say you wanted uh, certain bits coming off the end, so you can have a E to extrude and you can do it with individual vertices. Uh, just a bit of an axe head on the end. I know a sword wouldn't have this but for the purpose of this tutorial, this one is going to have a tiny axe head. And then I'm going to press F and just didn't think about the. Oh, wait, never mind, that's going to work. So we press F 
on these. So just selecting vertices in F to add faces works quite well. Oh, of course it's going to work well, but <laughs> you know what I mean. It, uh, it's a good modeling practice to press F while making the vertices because uh, in 2.9 especially there was a menu at this side in the toolbar which allowed you to add vertices or faces sorry but I don't think it's here no don't think so alright so I'm guessing F is just the new base way to add verts but that should be alright so that, that's like a thing on the end problem with this is if we go into up here to the top right where we see all these we've got the render the shader stuff like that we don't need to render it so it's nothing to render yet uh, we've got matte caps and stuff like that you can see it if we go to back face color now as you see this side you can't see that mesh and also the sword is inverted so you can only see the inside where we fix this is we come into here we press tab you select all and press space and you want to do flip normals so this will flip the normals so that now you can see the blade is on the outside and this has just been flipped around now to get this to properly stay 3d you can do some you can do something like this you can just grab the faces go to the left side e to extrude a tiny bit and then you should have yeah, it's been awkward, is it? I'm going to put a space, flip the normals. And yeah, there's a bit of a bug for that, but oh, not, it's not buggy, it's just the way I've done the mesh. I haven't done it very well. You see the, the edges of the mesh stay how they are. But really, you wouldn't want to do anything off one face. It would want, if you were going to pull um, a certain amount of vertices off you're going to do that and you're going to pull them off like that because that's just it's more effective than adding your own and you can obviously make it look like it's just pulling off without actually damaging the sword but that's just some extra stuff it doesn't really help you make a sword the sword was just a idea I thought of when thinking easy things to 3D model to get started with but also uh, difficult to get wrong in the type of thing that uh, let me just give you an example of what could go wrong so shift A and you add a cylinder just grab this and move to the side scale by the Z or yeah scale by Z does it not hmm. might have to go into it probably yeah there we go so we do that, we grab another mesh, so we're going to grab, let's do a UV sphere, we're going to grab that, put that over here, gonna go to edit mode again, shift X, there we go, there's the hill, that looks uh, perfect, shift C, grab that ball to put on the end, so we're going to add another UV sphere, put that there, Keep adding different things. We're gonna go. Hmm, what should we go? Yeah, it's add a cube. Do cube. Cube works. Uh, go here. Scale. Uh, scale Y. Scale Y. Thank you. Uh, and then we're gonna just scale the Z up. Uh, move it up. And then we're gonna take these up here extrude some more that's if, the, that's if uh, you know how to extrude when you're making it extrude some more uh, and the thing is it won't even be that high quality <laughs> so the majority of uh, beginners when they do 3D modeling will do stuff like this I mean I did it as well when I was beginning 3D modeling and it looks like they've done something from 
3D builder. It doesn't look any high quality at all, and you're not going to get anywhere with it. So this is much better. I'm not saying it's perfect; it's far from it. But for a, for a quick YouTube tutorial on how to get into 3D modeling, I don't think it's that bad. I still really don't like it. I changed a hell of a lot about it, and I'd actually have a reference image next to me, concept sculpts and stuff like that. I'd put a lot of effort into it if I was making it properly, but that's for you to go away and practice and just experiment with uh, manipulating different vertices and stuff. Because you can go into uh, this and just ch take, say, this, grab and move these up here. It doesn't look nice, but you can do it, which is what Blender is, yes, free, but it's very intuitive. Uh, to get good at it, you need to practice. And I know you may be sick of hearing the saying practice makes perfect, but with Blender and med plenty of other things, it's true, it does. Uh, this is just one of them. Uh, now, uh, something I wanted to show you in this video, which I was going to do in the last one, but I forgot. Uh, we actually added it to the add ons. I'm going to delete these faces here. Uh, this is a good example of how you can quickly manipulate faces. So here we have some vertices, right? And I want to get this added on all around here. So what what would be the easy way to do it? I'd, I'd do this one. I go select every single one and press F for every single one. That's not how you do it. I did that once before on the last sword I did. It didn't work. Uh, what you want to do is you want to press F and just move around because that's much simpler. And I've messed it up somewhere, but I'll fix it, don't worry. <laughs> but it's just that simple to just grab and drag around. It's no, I'll just delete these faces and do it again. Delete uh, faces. Delete whatever those are. You see something's gone wrong down the line where it's just collected on different meshes than it's supposed to. But that's fine. You get mesh errors uh, at times. Best thing to do for this, if you're using mesh 2P or mesh F2, uh, is to just grab the egg, the very edge of something and just put it around. It's done it again. Why is it doing it again? A more practical way of doing it will be let me give you an example we've got the sword at least not par that bit but like if we do uh, a UV sphere we can move this over here doesn't matter where it is in object mode or in edit mode we're gonna let's say we're gonna grab all this side again Z to go into wireframe mode tab edit mode, uh, we're going to shift D and we're going to grab and move it down. So that moves that down, we're going to grab the same area apart from the middle, or we can grab the middle yeah, and we're going to delete fit, not edges sorry, delete faces, didn't mean to click edges. Uh, then we can use mesh to, to basically do this in a split second. There we go. That's how you would get a line in between here. There are other ways of doing it, I think. I haven't used many of the other ways, but I know some of them are. So if you wanted to, another thing, if you're scaling on along the z-axis with something like this, it's going to scale this as well. If you don't want that scaling and you just want it to be like that, what you can do is you can just go into edit mode, z to go in wireframe, deselect half of it, grab with g, and z to lock it to the z-axis and move it up. That way it's still long but it's still kept its uh, spherical shape on the top and the bottom. Uh, stuff you can do with this sort of design. Uh, grab them all, E, all S to move them in. You could do stuff like that. Make some cool stuff with it. But uh, yeah, that's just my basic introduction to 3D modeling. Uh, I've always found a sword is a good, good uh, way of learning. 
uh, I have done uh, TARDIS interiors as a good way of teaching people before as well, but I've not ever actually done a physically teaching someone over a video sort of thing. It's just been text and Discord chats and stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will hopefully get another video to you soon on a different topic. Maybe some of the uh, different modifiers would work, like uh, maybe bevel, boolean, that would be good. Uh, I want to get you guys advanced enough so that I can take you doing some sculpting stuff, like uh, I'll give you a preview of one of the other things I've done. Uh, here we go. We can serve, I'll just call it sword to Uh, this is something I've been working on a bit if it wants to look. There we go. It's a uh, enemy for the one of the four who Adams. But uh, yeah. Basically, if you can get to this sort of level with your mod line, uh, then then you're ready to go into commission work stuff like that. This is from two weeks of sculpting practice, granted, but. Uh, I reckon if I could do it two weeks, so can you. So, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.